Welcome back, dear friends, to the glory room. Most of you know that I had to take uh, November and December off because of the suffering and the home going of my precious Dean. And I want to thank so many of you who have reached out to me to comfort me and to pray for me in this time of grief and sorrow. It has been a difficult road uh, and I'm still walking on that dark valley of the shadow of death, but I feel the Lord is with me and I believe that with the prayers of friends and the help of the Holy Spirit, I will get through this difficult time for the glory of God. I just want to thank Pastor Matt for inviting me to share with him in the Be Renewed program that your church is having during these weeks. Uh, it gives me the opportunity to do a little something besides uh, think about my loss. And I'm so grateful to him for doing that. Now, last Sunday, Pastor Matt preached on be renewed. Be renewed by taking heart. And it was a good sermon, a good message. I told him it was a good message and he delivered it well. He ended the message by asking a question. That question was, who do you need to reach out to this week and ask, uh, don't lose heart. Someone that you know who's struggling, you need to reach out to that person. Who is that person, he said, that you need to reach out to this week and, and, and say, don't lose heart. Well, I thought about that question. I thought about myself. And frankly, the first person that I need to reach out to is myself. I need to say to Walter, don't lose heart, Walter. Be renewed. Let the Lord give you hope and not despair. Resist despair and let the Lord fill you with hope. And I would imagine that the first person you need to talk to is also yourself. You need to ask yourself, is that something you're struggling with that you need the Lord's help with? Are you in danger of losing hope because you've become discouraged or depressed or uh, bewildered by some problem or some situation that you're in? If that's the case, then like me, you need to reach out to yourself and say to yourself, whatever your name is, so call your name like I call mine, Walter. The Lord does not want you to lose hope. He does not want you to lose heart. He wants you to be renewed through the power of his Holy Spirit coming into your life and pouring the love of God into you so that all of those dark things that are in there will be chased out as the Holy Spirit fills you with the love and the hope and the joy of the Lord. Now, I hope that you have this lovely brochure which I think it's been mailed to you, or maybe you've picked it up at church, but it is a beautiful brochure which explains this program, Be Renewed. And there's a scripture verse on it from Isaiah, which you're familiar with. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint, Isaiah 40, 31. Well, as you think about that, you turn into the little brochure and it says, Renewal begins with prayer. This past Monday, Pastor Matt and I were together and uh, the time that you've designated for prayer came up while we were together, 306, uh, because of 306 West Tuskena Street where the church is located. And so he and I paused and, and prayed together. Prayed for the people of First United Methodist Church in Wetumpka. Prayed for this program to be successful and to meet the needs of people and to help people to be renewed in every way possible. So I hope that you're remembering that no program in the church will succeed without prayer. Intercessory work is the greatest work that we can do for the Lord. So remember to pray for others 
and pray for yourself and pray for your church, pray for your pastor, pray for your staff, and pray that somehow we'll be renewed in these weeks and catch a new vision of what the Lord wants our church to be and how he wants each one of us to live. Now, when you look at this little inside page where it says, be renewed and take heart, this was the theme of the first message that Pastor Matt preached last Sunday. Being renewed is a choice, a choice. You can choose not to give up. You can choose not to lose heart. You can choose to be renewed and to have hope. And the, script, the, the wording here says sometimes we're dealing with chaos, fatigue, and frustration. It's easy for those feelings to take root inside of us. But 2 Corinthians 4.16, that's a great verse for this whole program. 2 Corinthians 4.16, memorize it, say it to yourself daily. It says this, therefore we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. You have a choice to be renewed and take heart. We have a choice uh, to take heart in our vision as a church and how God is calling each of us to give generously to make that vision a reality. I like the fact that this is not a program just designed to persuade you to decide to tithe or to give generously to your church. It's a program that's, that's going to focus on being renewed through faith and through getting our minds and hearts right with God. It's, it's a wonderful program. I like the fact that the giving is almost incidental in this program. And uh, when we get our hearts right with the Lord, we're going to give and we're going to give generously. And some of us need to give more generously than we ever have. And that may happen as you get renewed and you take heart. Well, when I thought about this uh, program, I, I thought about uh, the scriptures, how sometimes it's good to look at the scriptures, at a passage of scripture as a swimming pool. Uh, you may not have heard of that before, but... Uh, uh, think about a passage of scripture uh, like a swimming pool. It, it's a big pool of water and you can sit on the side and not get wet. You can sit on the side and not take advantage of the water and of the fun that you can have by getting in. You can look at it and say, wouldn't that be nice? I might enjoy a swim. I might enjoy getting out there and being in the water for a little while. But if you don't jump in, then you're never going to enjoy what you could enjoy by jumping in the pool. So if the scriptures can be think, thought of as a pool of water, as a swimming pool, then what we need to do is to jump in them. Jump in them. And by that I mean when you read the scriptures, put your name in it. Uh, when I read the scriptures, I, I, I read this little passage from 1 Corinthians four sixteen. Listen to what it says. Therefore, Walter, do not lose heart. That's jumping in the pool. Though outwardly you are wasting away, yet inwardly you, Walter, are being renewed day by day. You have a choice, Walter, to be renewed and to take heart. So I, I want you to think with me about this passive scripture. Now, sometimes it's helpful to look back uh, a little bit past the, the verse that we're focused on and get the context of the, of the verse. Get the context of what Paul is saying in that particular sentence or two. And so I, I, I looked at uh, how this passage is translated in the message uh, by Eugene Peterson. Uh, a year or so ago, Dean and I decided that we would read the New Testament in the message every day. We read through the entire New Testament together. I would read it aloud and we would then have our prayer time and pray for family and friends. And, uh, have, but reading the message was, was so, and it was so helpful. He gives us some beautiful ideas. It's not a real good translation of the scriptures, but it is a helpful translation that Eugene Peterson has given to Christianity and to the world. Now, I suggest you go back to verse 7 and read through verse 18. Verse 7 through 18. And I want to just go over this with you. If you have the message handy, you can get it out and follow along in your, in your Bible. 
Or you can look at your own Bible, and as I read this, you'll notice the difference in what is in your Bible and in what is in the message. So here goes. Verse 7, if you only look at us, you might well miss the brightness. We carry this precious message around in the unadorned clay pots of our ordinary lives. We're clay pots, vessels of clay. Oh boy, I realize that more and more every day that I'm a, I'm a clay pot and a broken pot at that. And go, Eugene Peterson goes on, that's to prevent anyone from confusing God's incomparable power with us. As it is, there's not much chance of that, he says. You know for yourselves that we're not much to look at. <laughs> That's one of the humorous ways that he, he translates this passage. You know you, for yourselves we're not much to look at. We've been sur surrounded and battered by troubles, but we're not demoralized. We're not sure what to do, but we know that God knows what to do. Boy, I like that. We don't know what to do, but we know that God knows what to do. We've been spiritually terrorized, but God hasn't left our side. We've been thrown down, but we haven't been broken. What, we, what they did to Jesus, they do to us. We've been through trial and torture, mockery and murder. What Jesus did among them, he does in us. He lives in our lives. Our lives are at constant risk for Jesus' sake, which makes Jesus' life all the more evident in us. While we're going through the worst, you're getting in on the best, he tells his friends in Corinth. Verse 13, we're not keeping this quiet, not on your life. Just like the psalmist who wrote, I believe, so I said it. We say what we believe. And what we believe is that the one who raised up the master Jesus will just as certainly raise us up with you alive. <clears throat> Boy, you can underline that, bold face it. What we believe is that the one who raised up the master Jesus will just as certainly raise us up with you alive. <clears throat> I like that. Every detail works to your advantage and to God's glory. More and more grace, more and more people, more and more praise. Now we come to verses 16 to 18 where we're focused uh, with our program. So we're not giving up. That's how he translates it. So we're not giving up. Uh, in the other verse, so we're not losing heart. We're not losing heart. And he says, you, yeah, we're not giving up. And that's a really good translation, I think. And other passages, other translations use that same terminology. We're not giving up. We don't really talk to each other too much in ordinary conversation about losing heart, but we do talk about giving up. And that's, that's really good. So we're not giving up. How could we? Even though on the outside, it often looks like things are falling apart on us. On the inside, where God is making new life, not a day goes by without his unfolding grace. These hard times are small potatoes compared to the coming good times, the lavish celebration prepared for us. When I read that, I thought about the celebration that my precious Dean enjoyed when she got to heaven. A celebration her reward for her faith to be in the presence of Jesus, to see our son that we lost so many years ago, to see her mother, to see her sister, to see her friends, Claire, Spencer, and others, and to, and to rejoice in the joy of the Lord that uh, has been hers. Oh, well, let me get back to the scripture. Uh, the lavish celebration prepared for us, there's far more here than meets the eye. The things we see now are here today, gone tomorrow. But the things we can't see now will last forever. Now that, that helps you to get a little better grasp of that particular passage by Eugene Peterson. Now, I want to turn to another passage, the New Life Translation, the New Living Translation. It's called the NLT, the New Living Translation. Here's what it says now, and you'll notice some of it is pretty similar to what Peterson said. That is why we never give up. There you go. We never give up. We never give up. Though our bodies are dying. I like that. That's, that's uh, instead of decaying inwardly. <laughs> okay, okay. Decaying inwardly, fine. Uh, but this, this, this gets a little clearer to me. Though our bodies are dying, and I realize my body's dying, 
And one day this body will have served its purpose. It'll be the shell that they put in the cemetery. But my soul, my spirit will be with the Lord. And Paul says our spirits are being renewed every day. You could say our souls are being renewed every day. You could say our spiritual lives are being renewed every day. And then for our present troubles are small and won't last very long. Yet they produce for us a glory. Oh, there's my word. A glory. These troubles produce a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. So we don't look at the troubles we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze. Notice that word and we'll come back to it. So we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. For the things we see now will soon be gone, but the things we cannot see will last forever. Now, friends, I want you to do this with me. Jump in this passage. There's the swimming pool. Jump in this passage with me and float on the promises of God. You know, in, the, in, the, uh, in Israel, they've got this dead sea, which is filled with salt. And when you get in it, you, you float. <laughs> it, it, it's just amazing that that salty water will cause you to float. Well, when you jump in the pool of the scriptures, you can float on the promises of God. Oh, I like that. Let's look at this, this passage. You know, let, let some of these, the way you jump in is to grab a hold of a passage and think about how it applies to you. Think about what it means to you. Think about what will happen if you take it seriously. That's why we never give up, never give up, never give up. You know, sometimes I make up songs. Do you ever make up a song and sing it? Uh, I, I recommend you do it when you're by yourself, you know, so other people won't be bothered by your, your strange voice. But um, you can make up a song. Well, I'm never going to give up. I'm never going to give up. I'm never going to give up. Well, you can put a tune to it. And I, I do that sometimes. But never give up. It's a choice. You can decide. In my lifetime, I've... I've um, counsel with three different men who had a pistol in the hand ready to take their life. And each one of them, the Lord Jesus helped me to persuade them not to give up. Oh man, I'm so glad. Uh, every now and then I hear from one of my friends who, who moved to another state now, but he never ceases to, to give thanks, not just to me, but to Jesus for turning his life around. I said to him, you've got a wife that needs you. You've got children that need you. You've got a reason to live. And the Lord persuaded him to not give up. And he gave me that gun. I've had three pistols given to me. I didn't give them back to him either. And each one of those men decided that he wasn't going to give up. And I left uh, their presence and I left their, their singing. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you helped me to... Move these men to the point of saying, I will not give up. I will not give up. I will move on. I will trust the Lord. I'll let him fill me with hope. And then uh, let's fix on another verse here. Being renewed daily or day by day or every day, as the scripture says. We're being renewed. Our inward being, our spirit, our soul is being renewed. It's being given life by Jesus by, the, by Almighty God, every day, daily, when you wake up tomorrow, God has a new supply of grace to put in you, to renew you, your soul, to renew your spirit, so that when your body passes on, when your body dies, I, I want them to put in my obituary that on a certain day, my body died, but my spirit didn't die, my soul didn't die, but it went on to be with the Father Jesus said, into your hands I commit my spirit, and I want my spirit, my soul, to be committed into the hands of my heavenly Father, and they can put my shell of a body in the grave because I won't need it anymore. I'll have a new body by the grace of God. Here's another one, a glory. I mentioned that, a glory. Well, you can see behind my head a little sign that says, Lord, fill this, this home with your glory. Fill this home with your glory. Yes, this is the glory room. I put it up here. And then there's a picture of Dean. Picture of her taken back in October. She was sitting on a porch looking at a beautiful scene. She's looking up to the Father. Her Bible's on her hand. She's looking up as, as though she was looking up toward the heaven, toward God, toward Jesus, and saying, I'm coming home. I'm ready to be with you. 
You know, just a few hours before she died, she said to Caitlin, who is Anthony's wife, my grandson, Anthony Aldrin, she said, uh, Caitlin said to her, how you, how you feeling? How you doing? She said to her and to our whole family, I'm at peace. My heart is filled with joy. That's the message she gave us as she was preparing to leave this world. That's the message she gave us. I'm at peace. She was at peace with God. And his peace was in her. Jesus said, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives to you, give out to you. She had the peace that Christ gives to those who trust him. She had it. And because she had that peace, her, her heart was filled with joy. And that precious heart led her into the presence of her risen, conquering Savior. And that's where she dwells today, feasting on the manna of heaven. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, what does glory mean? Well, it means something exciting. When I say glory, I'm talking about what God is doing, what God will do, what God has done. And think of glory as being wonderful, uh, glorious, marvelous, like a home run. Back when Steve was a little boy, he was playing baseball. One day he came up to bat and he swung that bat and that ball went over the fence. And we watched Steve run the bases and, and come in home and stomp on home plate. I said to him as we got in the car and went home, how did it feel? He said, I just can't tell you, Daddy. It felt so good. Yes, <laughs> that was a time to say glory because of a, of a home run. And one day we were in the, in the stadium watching Matt play high school football. And uh, one of the opposing team uh, running backs had fumbled the ball in the end zone. And Matt recovered it in the end zone for a touchdown for his team. And we shouted, glory. My wife was so excited, she, she forgot to hug me and hug the man who's standing next to her. <laughs> glory will cause you to do strange things. And a glory moment in your life. Well, like a testimony, glory is, you want to say glory when somebody gives a testimony that makes your heart sing. I remember how my heart was stirred one day when Dean got up and gave a testimony standing beside the pulpit. She said, I'm not a preacher. I won't just stand by the pulpit. She'd put one hand on it and she'd give a testimony of God's grace. And that day she began by quoting the entire Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, Lord O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. <laughs> That's about all I can remember. She quoted the entire Psalm. And that was a glory moment for me when she was reciting that and giving such a beautiful testimony. Well, glory is like when my mama won a blue ribbon for uh, an entry in the state fair. Glory is something wonderful that happens, like getting a BB gun when I was eight years old under the Christmas tree. Well, there are times when you can say glory, but you know, the wonderful thing about glory is that God is full of glory and we give glory to God by praising him. We praise God and give glory to him. The heavens declare the glory of God. Glory is everywhere. And we just need to be thankful for the glory that we have witnessed and the glory we've experienced and the glory we're going to experience when we depart this life and inherit uh, the eternal life that he's promised to those who trust him. And we hear him say, well done, Walter good and faithful servant. I, I look forward to hearing those words and I trust by his grace, I will hear them. Now, let me say this, a personal word to you. I don't know what situation you're in. Now, I don't know what's troubling you. I don't know what problem you may be facing. I don't know what's going on in your life, but whatever it is, I want you to do this. Get your Bible out and read 2 Corinthians chapter four. Read those verses seven through 18. Read those verses and jump in there. Jump in and think of it as a swimming pool. Get wet. Think about the mighty God we serve. You know, when you jump in that pool, you can start singing. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. <laughs> oh my goodness, I love these songs. Sing that song. Get in the pool. Jump in there. Remind yourself that he's able to help you refuse to give up. Remind yourself he has the power to help you choose never to give up and tell God you're a vessel. Tell him you're a clay vessel. Tell him you're a broken vessel. 
But being a vessel, he can pour his love into you and say, Lord, I lift up myself, this broken vessel, for you to pour your love through your Holy Spirit into my heart. Fill me with your hope and uh, believe that when his hope comes in, when, when hope comes into your heart, despair will have to get out. Discouragement will have to leave because hope will fill it up. It has to go. Now, thank God for your hope. Take heart. Take heart. And start singing. Make up a song. I, I, I love that word gaze. Remember how it's in there in one of those passages? I will gaze at the Lord. That's what we need to do, folks. Glance at your problems. Gaze at Jesus. Glance at your trouble. Gaze at Jesus. Glance at what's going on, this situation that's bothering you. But gaze at Jesus. And the longer you gaze at him, the more you realize he has the power to help you overcome whatever situation you may be in. He'll help you to do that. Oh my goodness. Make up a song and sing it. Decide to live with such hope that your friends will wonder what happened to you. And they'll want to know how they can get what you got. When you wake up every morning, thank God that he has given you the power to not give up and to take heart and to be renewed. One day in the parking lot in Montgomery, I, I was going into the hospital to visit someone and I met a lady I knew coming out of the hospital. She'd been in to visit one of her relatives and we knew each other and I hadn't seen her in, in a couple of years and I stopped and chatted with her. And the more I stood there talking to her, the more I realized there was a radiance about her. She was just radiant. And uh, it, it, I, I was just so impressed with the radiance of her, her physical being, her body. Not just beauty, but the radiance. That she just seemed to glow as though she was alive. And I said to her, you, you seem to be filled with uh, some radiance that, that I'm, I'm seeing. What, what happened to you? She was stunned by my comment. And all she could think of to say was, well, I had gallbladder surgery about a month ago. And we laughed and I went on, she went her way. And I walked away from her thinking, boy, if a gallbladder surgery will do that for somebody, I need to go get my gallbladder removed. Uh, I need to recommend to people, go get gallbladder surgery if it's going to give you that kind of radiance which it gave to her. Well. Thank God when you get up in the morning that he's given you the power to choose to not give up and to take heart. Thank him for giving you the grace to be an example to your family and your friends of what God can do when a person asks God to fill him with hope. Now would you let me pray for you. Let us pray. Loving Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for this life you've given us. Thank you for the life of Dean, that you, and the years you gave us to live as your servants and to go to so many places and to do so many things uh, to try to cause people to see your glory and to give thanks for all that you mean to us and to them. Oh, Lord, I thank you today for the people who are listening. And Lord, I'm thinking that there's somebody listening to me right now who's in a bad situation, who's discouraged, who may be depressed, and Lord, I just want to lift that person up to you and pray that you would make yourself real to that person right now. So real that they would, they would take heart. So real that they would refuse to give up and would let you renew their soul and their spirit and, and experience the joy of knowing that every day you're coming into their life to renew them and to give life to their spirit so that when this life is over, there will be a live, growing spirit that can be translated into the eternal presence of the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that you would rescue any person listening today who's caught up in depression and discouragement and about to, about to give up. Help that person, Lord, to not give up, to take heart, to be renewed by the presence and power of Jesus in their lives and to find in him that the joy of the Lord is our strength no matter what situation we're in or what circumstances we're facing. Give us uh, 
gratitude, Lord, for all you have done. Give us faith that you are doing great things even now and give us hope that tomorrow we will experience your renewing power in fresh new ways and find your grace sufficient for every need that we're going to face until you call us home. In the strong and wonderful name of Jesus, we pray with thanksgiving and all God's people said, amen, 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 amen. God bless you. Until next week, from the glory room, this is the old man Walter saying, be renewed, take heart, never give up, hope in Jesus, let him help you live the life he wants you to live. Amen, amen, glory. <laughs>